Welcome to the 10-Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil, and I was asked a really good question just the other day. When is a church legally required to give a giving statement? When are they legally required to do so? Is there a dollar amount threshold? Um, and I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you this. The church is not legally required to give a gift receipt, but if their donors want to write off their charitable contributions on their taxes, then they may very well need a gift receipt. And so that's really what we're talking about is what does the donor actually need? And the, the answer may surprise you, um, but I, I want to qualify it first. I would say that the vast majority of your donors aren't able to write off any of their giving anyway. Why is that? Because currently less than 10% of people itemize on their taxes. And the only way to write off your charitable contributions is by itemizing. So I, I just want to leave that out there that um, this is more of a luxury. And so the vast majority of people aren't actually going to need your giving statement, but it is a good communications and it's a good way to connect with donors anyway. So let's go ahead and look at what the IRS says. As you can probably imagine, the IRS has a lot to say about charitable contributions. They have a lot to say about a lot of things. They have a publication that's very long and I'm not gonna link to that one, but there's a very short user-friendly one. It's even attractively formatted. I think it's maybe nine pages. I'm gonna go ahead and link to that in the description. And that'll tell you the gist of what you need to know. And the first thing you need to know is that if the gift is under $250, your donor doesn't need a gift receipt. And this is talking about the individual gift. So a lot of people might give $20 a week. So that's $2,040 for the year. They don't need a gift receipt because each one of their individual gifts was under $20. But somebody that gives uh, just $2,040 at a one-time thing, they do need a gift receipt. Because, so that's that's the difference. We're looking at the, that threshold is if it's $250 or over, they need a gift receipt. But if it's $250 or, or less than $250, their bank statement or their credit card statement will suffice for their records. So if they itemize. So again, those people that have a gift of $250 or more, they need a gift receipt that says how much was given and exactly when it was given. So that's why a lot of times a church will give a giving statement and you'll see all the different weeks of when you made a gift on there because they're trying to fulfill that requirement. The other one that if somebody donates non-cash property, so think of a uh, stock or a desk or whatever it happens to be a vehicle, they should get a gift receipt. Um, it seems to me that that is one of the things they have. You don't want to put the value on it, but you should acknowledge it. Uh, you should thank them anyway, but you should acknowledge that I received an oak desk on January 4th, uh, 2022, and but you don't have and it was in good condition or something like that. That that would suffice. And then the last one is. Some of us will do like an auction or a fundraiser type of thing. And whenever somebody pays $75 or more and they're getting something in return. So I, I call it gifts with benefits here. Uh, we, I, Mitchell Christian, they have an auction, for example, every year. And you'll pay stuff and people are overpaying for the item because they're really part, part of their item is to help the school. And so, yes, they're getting something in return, but they know that they're overpaying for the item because the, the, their primary motivation is to help the school and not to um, get maybe a jar of pickles or a peach pie or something like that. Anyway, so if, if you do some kind of a fundraiser like that where people are buying, buying items and they're spending more than $75, you do need to disclose the amount they paid and the value of the items that they purchased because then their charitable contribution is going to be the amount they paid minus the value of the items they purchased. Let's talk really briefly about the gift receipt in itself. I think that's often overlooked. And like I said before, most of your people aren't going to need it for tax purposes, but it is a good letter of communication. And there are going to be 
some of them that do need it for tax purposes. So let's try to, to hit both targets, those that uh, just need to be thanked and encouraged and those that need it also for tax purposes. So one of the things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to issue it timely. They need that gift receipt before they file their taxes. So I always like to say, you know, before the end of January, you should issue that gift, gift receipt or that giving statement. It's going to have to say the date of when it should say the date period of when it was was given and the total dollar amount. And another thing that you should add that you need to add, especially if it's if it's true, <laughs> I'll just put that in there, is that they did not receive any goods and services in exchange for their gift, only non-tangible religious benefits. That's that IRS can language. I tried to put that in here. Actually, Bruce Bloomer and I developed this template letter a long time ago, and I'm going to go ahead and link to that down below. So you can grab that and I'm going to put a non-cash one down there too. So if you have non-cash items and, and one of the things too, I mentioned this before, but if they have gifts of $250 or more, it would be good to maybe add a bullet, bullet point down here and just list the date and the amount. And all you could say is, According to IRS requirements, we need to list any gifts of $250 or more, and then you can go ahead and start listing them down. So hopefully that template helps you, or maybe it's just a way, maybe it's already in your system, but don't neglect this, this letter. Don't just send them a statement that looks like an invoice or something from a regular business. Go ahead and add some meaning to it. I like it too if, if there's a personal note, so probably you have people that have really stepped up their giving, or maybe they went through a hard time or whatever it happens to be, or maybe they're a fantastic volunteer. Go ahead and have somebody in leadership, put a little note to thank them, make it personal. You know, um, yeah, I just can't say enough. Don't neglect this. Uh, another thing I see pa churches do and pastors do is that they might say, because of your giving, this happened in 2022. And what here's what we're looking forward to in 2023. So those are just thoughts that you don't want this just to be a transactional type of a statement. We want to say your giving is helping transform uh, people and the world through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit working through them. So anyway, that is enough preaching. Those templates are going to be below. All right, that brings us to the end. I'm gonna put in a bonus link to Bruce Bloomer's website. Uh, he's a really good guy. He has a lot of experience in the fundraising world. I'm not sure if he's doing any consulting work, but he's a great guy, he has some good books out. Uh, I'm also gonna put a link to Dakota Wesleyan. Uh, that's where I teach. And I actually just taught my tax class about charitable contributions and businesses and what that's like. So. Just a thought, don't forget to send your gift receipts to businesses that support you as well because they can benefit from being able to write it off as well. All right, uh, God bless you till next time.